we haven't seen a recount in a presidential election turn anything like 10 to 20,000 votes difference and across multiple states. Trump doesn't just have to do this in one state like 20 years ago with Bush versus Gore in Florida. He would have to change the vote totals in Georgia, Arizona, and Pennsylvania. It's very, very unlikely, I think. John, give us an insight into how the president is thinking right now, because he is adamant that voter fraud has taken place in the United States, and that fraud cost him the election. So you advised the president, you've advised him in the past at least. Is there any evidence that voter fraud has taken place in any of these key battleground states? You are starting to see cases where people are coming forward and saying, I saw improper treatment of ballots or observers weren't allowed close enough to the count. Uh, so in every election like of this nationwide, there are going to probably be cases here and there. The problem is that you don't have any proof of something systematic, something with large enough numbers that would make a difference here where Joe Biden has won tens of thousands of votes. My advice to the president uh, would be, look, you have the right. Make sure all the votes are counted correctly. Ask for recounts. It's actually good for everybody to have confidence in the vote total. But at the same time, I would say, start allowing a transition uh, to occur. Even if you think the election didn't go your way, even if you think the states were unfair to you, still the constitutional process is gonna start moving forward towards a January 20th inauguration. And it would be good for the country and good for President Trump too to start the transition process so that Joe Biden can get the country going as soon as he takes over in about a month and a half. Indeed, though, but in a way, the president has been actively undermining the integrity of the election by calling for recounts across these states. And I think the other important thing to point out here, and a question to you, in the absence of any credible evidence of voter fraud, at what point does the president need to concede this election, something that he has not done yet? This is an interesting thing. He may never concede. He doesn't have to concede. Uh, the thing about the American Constitution is that it doesn't actually require the sitting president to do anything one way or the other. On January 20th, Donald Trump's term ends and Joe Biden's, I believe, will begin. Uh, the president doesn't have to do anything. He can't interfere with that, if you think about it. It's really the state sending the electoral votes in to Washington, D.C., that uh, trigger everything happening. So I think, uh, you know, the states are gonna move forward. They all have their different deadlines. They're all generally at the end of November when they are gonna certify their votes. That starts the process to picking the electors and they're gonna meet in December and send their votes to Washington. I think if President Trump has any hope of showing some kind of fraud significant enough to change the outcome in three states simultaneously, it's gonna have to be in about in a week and a half and two or two weeks and that's, a really, real, like I said, a really real Hail Mary pass when you're back on your five-yard line and you're trying to score a touchdown.